What is going on everybody? Welcome to the sixth Python for Finance tutorial with Quantopian and Zipline. In this tutorial we're going to improve this algorithm a little bit because right now all we're doing is making purchases. But we're not making any sales at all. So we need to have some sort of logic that will handle for sales. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to utilize a new method and this method is rebalance. So the rebalance method is added here because there might be logic that you want to use from time to time. Let's say that you want to schedule to occur, but you may not want it actually in your handle data method. Um, so generally any sort of rebalancing, let's say you want to like after so much time, you want to make sure your portfolio ends at being 10% technology, 10% uh, manufacturing 10% whatever else right so you would use the scheduling function to schedule changes also let's say you're trading minute data but you want to have something run once a day you would use the schedule function okay so let's go ahead and get started with that so right now we've got before trading start and we run that and we have this initialize and in initialize this is where you have to put your um, what you want to schedule basically or this is where you define what you want to schedule so we use a command called uh, schedule so schedule function schedule function <laughs> and then you put the function that you actually like what's the function you want to schedule basically and that's going to be rebalance uh, and then you're going to have um, you've got basically went like the date rule so you've got date rule and we'll just leave that blank for now and then time rule. Okay, so this is when is this running? Like on what date? And then time is what time is this running? So for example, date rule uh, can equal date underscore rules then dot and you have all these options here. So you've got every day, at the start of the week, at the end of the week, at the start of the month, at the end of the month. We're gonna do every day. Then time rule, this is, okay, so you're running it every day, but at what time? So you're gonna say time rule equals uh, time underscore rules dot, and you've got two options, market open, market close. We're gonna do market open. Um, and then you can say like basically here, relative to market open time, you could say you want it to run one hour after market open, one hour and one minute after market open and so on. We're just gonna run it right at market open. We're not really too focused on anything there. So that's our schedule function. Now we actually need the function that we've scheduled. So <laughs> let's go ahead and define that. So we're going to define rebalance. Rebalance is going to require uh, both context and data. So we'll need those two things. And then what we're going to say is for stock in our portfolio. So for stock in context.portfolio.positions. Okay, what do we want to do? So we don't care about anything else but the companies that we hold when we're doing a rebalance. And so we're gonna reference all the companies that we have and then we're gonna be like, well, what is their, um, their values? And then this is why we're using the term, this 14 here, because what we're gonna say is we're kind of, we're using this so we can reference, uh, that's our maximum, right? So if it's 14 or higher, we don't wanna be invested anymore in this company. We're saying it's a little too highly valued. So what we'll do is for stock in context portfolio dot positions, what do we want to do? Well, we want to say um, if that stock is not in context dot fundamentals fundamentals and so if that stock is not in context dot fundamentals and the stock is in data. What we want to go ahead and do is we're going to order underscore target uh, and we can say order target and say zero. Another one I just want to show you is target percent. So you can order uh, to make a percentage of your portfolio that company. So that's kind of cool. So you could say order target percent, for example, we'll say stock zero. We can also say order target equals zero as well. And that would make just as much sense. Okay. So now we have this rebalance uh, that's running. Now, uh, I want to come down here and right here for this try and accept. The reason why we have this try and accept is because with both PE ratio and price to book ratio, if the PE ratio is in the negatives 
and I believe the price to book ratio, both of those, generally if they're in the negatives, companies uh, or people that report fundamentals are gonna say that value is null or not available or whatever. Uh, so if that's the case, um, we're gonna basically context that fundamentals here is a pandas data frame. And that's how we're referencing, we're basically referencing the columns of that data frame and the values of those columns. And so it's possible that at, along the way, these values don't exist, right? So when we come here to reference the PE ratio and we're asking, is it less than 11? The value might be not available. And if we do that, it's going to return an exception. So we use try and accept here, but another thing you, you might as well do in the more Pythonic solution would be more so um, context.fundamentals here. And then basically right after the query, you would say something like this, like context.fundamentals equals context.fundamentals dot drop. And again, I don't like this autocomplete. Can I just, there we go, drop NA. And that should delete or remove all rows that have a not available value in it. But still, uh, it would be requesting that data, I believe, for that time, and it may not exist. So I'm going to use try and accept here for that reason. But I'm going to get rid of that too. Okay, so now we're both buying and selling companies. So we can run this back test now and, and maybe um, do a little better than we did last time, huh? <laughs> So anyways, as this runs, a couple other things that we might want to consider is, um, you know, we're, we're making these buys and sells based purely on fundamental data, but we might want to have some other rules maybe. So another useful thing is like stop loss and stuff like that. So this time our return, uh, we get 3.9%. Uh, there were a few times we beat the market, but nothing very uh, exciting here. Uh, but it's decent and low, at least you have a, a low drawdown. Our sharp ratio still is horrendous. And just for the record, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the sharp ratio alpha and beta in the coming tutorials. So, cause it probably means nothing to a lot of you right now. <laughs> so anyways, we will talk about that probably not in the next one, but the one right after that. Anyway, um, it might be the case right now that we're buying companies and we're making a mistake. Okay. So one way that people kind of alleviate themselves from mistaken trades or trades that in their head made sense, but the market is just saying, nope, that's not a good trade, is using what's called a stop loss. So a stop loss is where you make a buy, but while as long as you're holding that basically, or as long as that stop loss is active, if the price hits that stop loss, you'll sell it. So it's a way to kind of cut your losses, so to speak. So if you buy a company and you think it should go up, but instead it goes down, Maybe you made the wrong choice. Maybe you made the right choice and you need to be more patient, but maybe you made the wrong choice. So basically what a stop loss allows us to do is say, okay, well, we're going to buy this company, but this is the most money I'm willing to lose on this company. If it gets worse than this, sell the company. And it's a good idea to use stop loss. People have a hard time cutting their losses a lot of times. Uh, so if you can write it into your program and make your program cut your losses for you instead of you cutting your losses, it's more likely that you'll actually cut the losses and you'll be more successful. So let's add in a stop loss to this in the next tutorial and we'll kind of see how that pans out for us. So uh, anyway, that's it for this tutorial. If you guys have questions or comments up to this point, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions and until next time.